Firoz, when an investor wants to know about returns, he gets these hard numbers, right? 10%, 20%, or in some cases, whatever, 5 or negative. But when they want to know about risk, we get these vague terms like high risk or low risk or medium risk. Isn't there a mathematical way to actually measure risk? Yes, I think that's a very big uh, problem because there are two sides to the coin. One is return and risk. So return is generally mathematical. Risk also can be mathematical if we so chose to. For example, if you're trying to measure market risk, the movement of price, which is called the market risk, can be measured by a nomenclature, which is, sounds more complex, but it is actually not so complex. It's called the standard deviation. All right, so I'm going to take you on your word that it's not so complex, but what is standard deviation? So whenever you deal with numbers, the first step is to find out whether the number is a constant or a variable. In case of fixed deposit, it's a constant because if you're expecting 8%, that's exactly what you get unless the bank is bankrupt. The second, which is the equity market investments, generally have a variability. If you expect a 15% return, it doesn't mean that exactly 15 is what will get credited. So standard deviation is nothing but the extent of variability in a variable. It helps us understand the average variation of each of the observations from the mean of all the observations, mean by which I mean the average. If you are trying to compute the standard deviation for 10 different observations of 10 different years of return, it is nothing but the deviation from the average of each of these years returns. All right, let me give you an example. Say you want to calculate the standard deviation of the time it takes to reach your office. So on day one, you would have taken 35 minutes. On day two, you could have taken 30. On day three, it could have been 35 again, while on day four, you've taken 20 minutes to reach. So on and so forth for the next 10 days. So if you were to calculate the average between 20 minutes on one day, 30 on another, 35 on one day, etc., you would come to an average time of 30 minutes, which is what it would take you on any other day to reach office. Any variation from this expected outcome is the risk to your time estimate and therefore the standard deviation. So let's look at the variation of time as against the expected outcome. On day one, you took 35 minutes, which means the variation from the average is five. On day two, you took 30 minutes to reach and therefore the variation is nil. On day three, again, you get a variation of five. On day four, the variation is minus 10 because you took only 20 minutes to reach, so on and so forth. So therefore, if you were to calculate the average variation from the expected outcome, it would be roughly 5.77 minutes. The only point to be noted in the example, Sumera, is that all deviation, either positive or negative, both are considered as risk. Hence, standard deviation adds them all up. So minus 10 minutes, which is what you took on the fourth day, is still considered as a plus 10 risk. All right, that makes sense actually. But Firoz, now that we sort of know how standard deviation works, let's understand the application. By this example, a low standard deviation would obviously be better, right? And therefore, the same for mutual funds? Yes. Point one is any expected return which is significantly higher will have a higher variability. If you look at a debt fund in the mutual fund industry, the standard deviations of those debt funds actually works out to be between 2 and 3%. But on the contrary, for equity funds, it can range between 14 to 15 percent on the large cap side. And when you look at PMSs, which are portfolio management services, which are concentrated equity portfolios, the standard deviation goes as much as 20 percent. And the most popular index in the country, which is Nifty, for the last three years, its standard deviation was 13. Now, why is this important to get a sense of what this number could be so that you can try and see whether you want to buy funds with high standard deviation and take the incremental risk or you would want lower standard deviation for yourself. So Firoz, if you were to naturally increase your time horizon, your standard deviation should ideally reduce, right? Yes, actually you've made a very, very valid point because time frame reduces the risk. For example, Nifty standard deviation for the last three years rolling is 13%. On the other hand, the standard deviation for Nifty, which is the same index which we were just speaking about, for 10-year periods would be as little as 4.5%. Wow, everything looks better over a longer period of time frame, right? 
But for an investor, where does he source this information? Does he have to calculate it himself or is it readily available? For different funds, it's available for you and me to see on individual investments. But the most important thing is risk needs to be measured on the entire portfolio for which a simple Excel sheet can calculate it for you. If you put the value of your portfolio for the last one year, for example, and use the standard deviation formula, which is already inbuilt, you will get the standard deviation of your portfolio. And the last point is a standard deviation of the portfolio should ideally not exceed eight in the Indian context. Yield to maturity is the total return that's expected if a bond is held until maturity. Now this is calculated as a long-term bond yield, but it is expressed as an annual percentage.